and and some others. Um, and he's going to talk about jamming with guitars and sense using the scope. Uh, please, Paul, go ahead. Thank you for the introduction, Marco. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm glad to be here. I'm Paul. I'm a software developer. I usually share topics around software development and data with the community. Today, I'll be sharing from one of my hobbies, which is music production. It's something that I've been dabbling with during the past year or so. One of the softwares that I came across and used during that period is Bespoke. Having used a lot of music production softwares in the past decades, I'm fascinated by the amount of features this software delivers. Due to time constraint, uh, we won't be covering all of these features, but I'm excited to share with you my favorite modules that I often use. This book is an open source modular digital audio workstation for Mac, Windows, and Linux. It was started by Ryan Challenger in 2011. It also has an active Discord community. Ryan is also there helping answer questions whenever users like me uh, have inquiries. What attracted me to Bespoke is the way the user interface is designed. As a guitarist, like what you can see here, uh, we also usually have effects boxes lined up and connected via cables. This experience easily translates with how Bespoke is designed. I can just connect the modules with lines like how I connect my pedal effects with cables, like you can, what you can see here on the screen. Uh, there's a signal generator connected to the output module connected by just a line. Perhaps one of the best ways I can share this with you is through a sequence of demos. I'll share how to create a sound using an oscillator. I also have a MIDI controller with me right now that I can share with you how to use with Bespoke. We'll add some drums to give a steady rhythm to our song. And lastly, I'll share how to connect an audio input like this guitar. So let's start with the first demo, how to create a sound. So before I open up Bespoke, let me just uh, discuss the different modules that I'll be using for this demo. The one that you can see at the bottom is called the output module. This just basically routes the audio to your speakers. The one right above is splitter. It just splits the audio signal into two mono signals if you have two uh, left and right speakers. And then the gain module just basically to, uh, adjusts the volume of the whole uh, setup. Oh, what we've got here is also an oscillator. It generates the audio signal with a specific waveform, although it has other features like filter envelope and stuff, but I won't be covering that. Um, for me, as long as I can, I can select the saw wave, um, square, square wave, and so on, that's fine for our purposes. And what you can see on the left side is a note sequencer. It helps us loop a sequence of notes. So basically, we can just uh, paint our notes here, and we can drive the the sound uh, going to the to the output. So let me just open up this code and share to you a um, little bit of that. Let me load a, a blank uh, canvas. So what you can see here is usually the uh, default um, setup for this code. You have the default set of modules called gain and output. But for here, uh, I'll just, uh, uh, open the, the oscillator so that we can choose what sound we can generate. If I connect it here, you won't be able to hear the sound yet because we don't have any uh, driver for that sound. So what I can uh, add here next is a note sequencer, like what you can see uh, in, the, in the slide a while ago. I'll be connecting this to the oscillator. And then once connected, I can just draw the notes that I want to uh, play. If you can hear, you should be able to hear the sound. Let me just increase the gain so that you'll be able to hear it. So I can play different notes uh, with this. And different leads. And I can uh, also randomize the, the pitch. 
minimize the length for this. I can increase it to 16, uh, 16 counts. And then change also the velocity. Um, a while ago, or previously, I was loading it and I just set it up. So let me just do that. So I've created a sort of uh, baseline uh, using the note sequencer and uh, this particular oscillator. So let's uh, put that uh, aside for now. Let's check what's the next setup that we can do with this bow. So the next one is adding an external MIDI controller. So right now, uh, what you can see here in the slide, I have this uh, Nano Key Studio, which is a MIDI controller. It simulates the keyboard and stuff that we can connect with this box. You can drive the notes, not just paint them as you uh, saw a while ago. So before we go to the actual demo, let me just uh, run through the, the modules that are needed. Uh, we have the MIDI controller to link the hardware uh, input uh, from our MIDI keyboard. We also have the Car Plus Pro, which is a synth so that we can simulate the clock stream. And then we also have the note looper. The note looper uh, is like your traditional looper, but if you want to keep playing the set of uh, chord progressions, uh, um, you can use this to, so that you can just keep on repeating. And lastly, I'll just uh, uh, show a little bit of scripting because it also enables you to use Python scripting for live coding. So let's. Uh, let me open that. Let me just check if everything's fine from the modeling shop. Okay, let's go back to the demo. I'm going to open a, 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 a blank uh, canvas again. And what I will do here is uh, I will get the, the synth. Um, where's that uh, car plus from? So that I can simulate the sort of clock string. And then I'll bring my MIDI controller module. And then from the MIDI controller, I'm going to choose my Nano Key Studio. And I'm going to play it right now, if you can hear. You should be able to hear the A chord. And if I want to use a looper um, so that I don't keep playing this, the notes that I'm playing over and over again, I'm going to add the note, uh, note looper. And instead of directly putting it there, I'm going to uh, put it in between the synth and then the my MIDI controller module. So here um, you can see uh, the movement. Uh, I'll need to click right here so that the next time I press the notes, it will record. And then if I do this, and sometimes if I hit the record and it's not uh, syncing on time, I can basically move it uh, within the same uh, within the same uh, mode. And then if I want to add an effect using the scripting. Let's say if adding echo is uh, it's a little bit of uh, effect that we can use, uh, I can add that using a script. Here I'll just uh, choose that uh, note echo, I'll load it. As you can see, this is a Python script. I'll just run it, but it's not yet connected, so it won't be able to apply the echo yet. So I'm going to connect it here to our module script module and then when I connect it to the synth, it should have the echo. If you want to have like more echo, I can just adjust the tone and then run it at the end. Then you have like more echoes. But let me load the uh, up the text to get the one of those. It's uh, nicer to hear. So here 
here we have the script module, we have the note looper, and it's playing the clock string. And now we'll add the base uh, that we've created uh, in the first demo so that you have the base and the clock string uh, play together. It's quite a simple uh, setup for now, but let's continue. So what we have now is a uh, MIDI controller uh, using the MIDI uh, looper. Uh, next is we're going to add some move to our setup. So we're going to add the drums. But before we open up the demo, uh, we're going to add two new modules here. Uh, the first module will be the drum player, which is just a sample player. So you have the kick drums, the snare, the hi hat, and so on. And we have a drum sequencer as well, so that we we'll know and direct uh, which uh, samples we we'll play on which part of the song or which part of the bar. So let me open that again, and let me open a uh, sample setup for uh, the drums. Load the setup, pause the for stage two. So, if you can see, uh, we have the drum sequencer and then we have the drum player here. I'll just turn off the drum sequencer for now so that if I uh, expand the drum player, you can see the different samples that I can play. So, basically, I can uh, choose the kick drum, the snare, hi hat, and so on. But eventually, if you want to play the, the music as a whole bar with a whole 4-4 uh, four, four beat, then uh, we would need the drum sequencer to play it accordingly. So this 0 corresponds to the random 0 here in the kick. Uh, number 2 here uh, corresponds to the snare. And then this number 5 here corresponds to what's this number 5? The clap. So if I play the drum sequencer, you should be able to play the whole sequence. So now we have the drums. Let's add the uh, bass that we had a while ago. And we'll also add the clapping. So far we have the sort of proof right now because we have the drums, we have the bass. So it's like steady. So let's uh, explore our other demo. Uh, that is adding the guitar. Uh, but adding the guitar would uh, lead us to uh, add a little bit more modules. One is the input because we need to get the input from the unknown source, such as the guitar, but you can get input also from mine. But for this uh, example, I'll get it from the guitar. And then VST, which is a virtual instrument, um, this scope also allows you to uh, use third party virtual instruments or effects. Uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, an, a, a simulator or a simulator uh, amplifier called Lucas Freeham uh, inside this room. And then uh, the other module is the looper, but in contrast to the looper that we used previously, uh, it was for MIDI instruments, but this one is for audio so that you can use the looper. So what we have here is uh, the input from my guitar. So if I play my guitar like this, you'll be able to hear it. And then uh, this um, loop hat, uh, the free amp, um, is just uh, another virtual instrument, third party in uh, virtual instrument that you can load in Disco. So you can use it like a normal amp and uh, turn the knobs and then you can use the presets as well. Um, but for this case, I'll just use perhaps maybe some drive. 
And then for the looper part, uh, before I use the looper, let's add a little bit of drums so that I know where to come in um, when I'm playing the looper. So we have drums. Uh, let me add uh, um, the guitar on the next run. So if I click capture, it will automatically uh, record. Up right now, uh, very strong. And then on top of that, you can choose to play your guitar. I can go on and on. Let's uh, proceed with the uh, rest of the. So if I open that video, uh, the part that I've uh, set up a while ago, so this is uh, the guitar part, I'm going to add the uh, bass part, and then let's add the uh, docking synth.
that's basically it for this vlog. If you want to know more, I can visit the link. And or if there are any questions, let me just uh, turn down the volume a bit. If there are any questions, I'm going to.